pottery peeps. So a lot of you did want to see, I got clay all over it, of course it's been out in the studio, did want to see how I did this effect on a wheel thrown mug. And if you watched the spider web, the creepy crawly spider web bowls from last week, I did this with the, um, with this Victorian Gothic Halloween lace that I got at Joann's years ago. So hopefully you can still find it because this is awesome lace. And um, so I'll show you how I made this mug. And I will get you set up over the wheel and we'll get going, okay? I've got a pound and a quarter of bead mix here. And we're just gonna throw the mugs. And then I'll show you how I finish them. Trying to get my wheel to speed up. <laughs> Need to tighten the foot feed. So when you're centering, you want to anchor that down first. And I'm holding my hands like this and just holding it there, keeping my elbows into my hips. Then I'll squeeze it and pull it up and then just repeat that as needed. Until I have it centered. Now, when you're throwing tall, it's a good idea to start a little taller. So I will take my clay, sometimes, not all the time. I usually take my thumbs to do the center. I've always just done my thumbs. You can check your bottom to make sure that um, you're not too thin. When you've been out this long enough, you kind of just instinctively know your bottom. I'll pull it out and then I will spend a little bit of time going from the outside to the inside just to compress that. And then I'll do my first pull. And I'll come up here and compress the rim. I'm going to go ahead and squeeze this in a bit because I want a tall, more slender mug, kind of Elvira or, um, oh God, what's your name in the Adams family? Can't believe that's escaping my mind. I love the Adams family. And I don't have a metal rib. How did I get here without a metal rib? Bee mix is super soft. So, since I don't have a metal rib, I will go ahead and use the wooden rib. Metal rib is always my favorite, though. So, for right now, I want this pretty much straight up and down. Move my water over here so it's <laughs> kind of um, learning different right now. Okay, so I'm going to bring this in just a little bit. Plenty thin down here, but I want to actually push this top part out a little bit. I'm going to have to get my metal rib. Hold on, please. So I'm going to go ahead and address my foot first. So if you look at this mug, I did that, what I call my drip catcher foot. It also looks like a ruffle to me. So that's the kind of foot that I'm gonna do. And the way that I do this kind of foot is I will trim that little bit off. Grab my sponge here and get that goober part. Actually, sometimes it's easier to do it with the 
I don't know where to put things because I usually put all my tools over on this side. But with the sun coming in my windows, this was the best place to put the camera. So I'll just lift that bottom up and I'll come in. Can't even see what I'm doing. Um, so I'd, here, nice thing about a kick wheel is I can go the other direction. So I basically, I just come in under with the wooden rib there and then I come in with this part of the wooden rib and I push in, okay? And then I'll come back with the sponge and I will just soften that down. I'm going to bring my finger in. And that's basically, I've addressed my foot until it is, um, until I put my handle on, okay? I already lost my metal tip. Does not bode well for today. So what I want to do now is I'm going to put a transfer on here. So I want to get the slip off. And I want it to be more straight up and down. So I will be right back with the transfer. So I do like, I'm not sure if this is sand bow or Elan transfers, but they're skulls with roses on them, which kind of, to me, fits this. So I will pick a skull and I will actually cut really close to the design. I like the little surprise. I mean, it looks like a really pretty mug. It's kind of a Gothic Victorian mug that I'm doing here. And so I like the surprise of the skull that isn't seen right away. So I've cut him out. And I'm out of the roses that I originally used on, here's the, the skull hiding in amongst the roses. I'm out of these roses and I do like them better, but um, um, these are the ones that I have. And these ones are Elan transfers. I'm gonna put my skull over there. And I'm just gonna kinda give myself an idea of how high I want the roses. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut probably about three inches of roses. and you can use any lace for this if you can't find um, this lace. You can use any lace. So this is going to give me, I'm going to probably put that about that far. I'm just making a little bit of a mark so I know. And when you're doing a transfer on a mug like this, I kind of like to do not a straight line, kind of a wavy line. It just kind of fools the eye um, so you don't see. And I'm just going to go ahead and start putting it on the wheel or the mug here. I've already got a wrinkle. Oh, but there we go there's a fold in this. And I'm not too worried about um, misshaping the mug because 
I'm really going to misshape it when I do the lace. And I don't worry too much about them being some wrinkles in this either. There's a lot going on here. Oh, I forgot my skull. So the skull goes down. Let's put the skull back to the seat. put the skull over here. So I'll put the skull under the transfer. So then I won't get roses there. I'm not doing a very good job here, but that's okay. It's kind of hard when you're you can do this when it's leather hard or you know when you're ready to do the the um, handle for those of you who have never done this before the key is getting your mug straight so that you don't have all these wrinkles and I'm doing this really fast I should slow down I might film it again <laughs> But just taking my rib here and making sure this is on. Even. Making sure that all the connected. I don't want to smear it. Started smearing it. I don't know if that's going to smear it just on the outside or the inside. So we'll find out when we take this off. I'm going to go ahead and see what we got. Oh, you know what I did? Put it on the wrong side. All right. I won't show that. All right, make sure that you're putting this on the right side or the, the ink side down because I just made a boo-boo. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and put this on here. Take it all the way around. Grab the scissors, which I left over there. Cut off my tail so I can use that on another one. And then I am just going to smooth this on. And I'm not worried about misshaping the mug. We're going to push this out anyway. Or I'm going to push this out anyway. <laughs> You want that transfer to touch the mug. And I'm not being too crazy if I get a little bit of wrinkles. You seriously won't notice by the time it's all down and glazed and there's a lot going on with this mug. And if you've never done this before, it is easier to do it when the mug is set up. And you most certainly can. But the lace you need to do now. So you can do the lace and then come back with the transfer. I've done it both ways. Okay. 
you do need to be a little bit more careful when you're doing it this way. So I'm just going to go over it just one more time here. Um, nice thing about putting a transfer on when you're still in the wheel, not only do you have the wheel to help aid you, it goes on super fast. Okay. Anything that's more light colored, I'll hit again. And I don't have to add any water. Cool, huh? Super cool. All right, let's go ahead and take off, take off the skull too. And then there's our skull. All right, now we're gonna do the lace. So my skull is here pointing at me. My handle will most likely be, be over here. So I'm going to start and stop there. So I'm just going to tack it right now and go around. I'm going to tack the top. Okay. And then I'm going to just put my hand on the inside and push the lace in. With the wooden rib. Sometimes I actually just push it in with my finger if it's tricky. Especially these little pieces down here. But the thicker pieces of lace goes better if I push it in with the rib. But the more dainty pieces, I guess, work better with my fingers. Oops, I lost my lace on that side already. So I'm going the wrong direction. All right. Let's take the lace back this way. All right. Anchor that in. So I'm going to go around the top, just make sure that the top part got pushed into the lace, or pushed into the mug. And then it's a matter of taking it off, and you've got your lace. Alright, so now we've got to fix everything we just did to this. <laughs> and you cannot really touch the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and push the bottom. I wanted it to have more of a belly. So I did leave the clay there so I could do that. And then I'm just going to center this top. Just kind of take my hand down the side you push it out just a little more and then center that top and that's it we get my water out and we'll come down here and clean up this foot and there's your mug here's the skull with the lace and then when it comes to, I will put underglaze in the lace and I can wear this transfer after it dries and I can see it better and handle it better. But probably when I put the handle on, I will wipe off 
the transfer that's over the lace and then put in black for the um, spider web. But that's how you do it. Pretty, pretty cool. And you end up with something like this. All right, one done. <laughs> Then I'm going to do a few more, and then I will bring you back for when I put the handle on. I'm going to go ahead and pull a couple of handles because I know these mugs are going to set up really fast because it's super hot out here. Hi. And all I'm doing is I'm just getting it wet and sliding it through my hands, moving, my, moving the clay. I'll come in here with my thumb, press it. And give it a channel and then I will literally just pull it off that's kind of a long one that's way too long anyway and then I'll just do it again I like my handles to be about five to six inches depending on the size of the mug and I've talked before I like a two to three finger handle four handles are great or four finger handles are great too but um, you need a really tall mug for that to make it look right. All right, so I'm just going to let those guys set up. And um, then when they are ready, we'll put the handles on them. One thing I will do is you can see where the lace comes down, but it doesn't quite meet the roses. Sometimes I cut, sorry, I've got my door open <laughs> and I've got some wind. Might have to shut my door. Um, I will cut around the roses like add just a little bit in between and put them like over the everything's drying out so dang fast because it's so hot today and then I will put them on there. So I will go around and do if they didn't get quite up high enough I will do that just to kind of give it that and I'm not real particular about making sure that they line up actually I can use this guy too. It's actually a really good way to use up all your little bits. And I'm not worried about it going over the lace because I'm going to be putting um, A black underglaze in that. So it's just a little fiddly. And it, you don't have to do this, of course. Only if you want to. And I'll just go over it just one more time. Just make sure I've got them down. I gotta get these handles on because they've dried out way too fast. So I'll show you how I do my handles real quick and we'll get one of them done at least before it dries out. I'll just take those off. Oops, I gotta be really careful when I put these on that I'm putting them on the right way. Let's see if I can still save that one.
Okay, so this one's ready for a handle. So let's go ahead and get that on real quick. I actually do not take my mugs off the bats until the very end. <laughs> I've learned to work on the bat. So obviously this handle is way too big. So I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna cut the top of it off. I'm gonna flatten this out. Kinda of push it in to where it's kinda of like that. And then figure out where I want my handle, which is probably right here. Cut that guy off. And I do the same thing here. So I push that out. Just kind of flare it out. And it's actually still a little too long. So I'll cut a little bit more off. Push that and flare it out. I'm going to slip and score. Do the same down here. Same on the mug. Push here. Just add a little bit more. Slip to it. I'm going to go ahead and push that on. I'll just kind of anchor that, make sure it's straight up and down. And then I use these dowels. I'll bring a dowel in and I'll push and rock it. And then I'll do the same down here. Then I'll take a wet brush and I'll grab that slip off of it. and just smooth it in. It's the slip that cracks on you. Where is my little finger tool? But one thing um, I like, because I leave it on the bat, I don't have to handle the mug and I can just pick it up and get that handle the way I want it. Smooth it with my finger. I'll smooth it down here too. And what I can't reach, I'll come in with the little tool and the brush. One thing I like to do for the handle is I will cut off just a little sliver or make a coil, either one, dip it in the water, and I will put it right here. So I'll add in this little bit and then smooth that in really well. I just like the way it looks and it reinforces if you have your handles cracking a lot there, try this, because it will take care of that for you. So I'll just smooth it in with the tool, and then I'll follow up with the brush. Sometimes I'll do it here at the top. A lot of times I don't. It just depends. If I think it needs it, I'll add it. But then I will... Just smooth that in. If I have any extra slip, get it off with my sponge and my finger. Just want to make sure I've got a good joint 
and then I will adjust my handle and then I can that's a good three finger handle I like the way that looks and I do round them off with a little um, flower pot and then I will cut it off the bat and this is how I do my um, bottoms this way. I will clean up my bottom first, make sure there's no sharp edges and it's all smooth. So I'll take a sponge or my finger, thumb, whatever. And then I will take this little dowel and I will just do this. And then I will make it more pronounced. And then I will go across. I basically make an X. You could do more if you wanted. But I basically make an X on the bottom. And that gives it the little ruffled look that I like. And also makes a really great um, slip catcher or glaze catcher. Sometimes you do have to come in. This, if I wait too long and my mug's a little too dry, I'll have to come in. They'll get little stretch marks here from being pushed, and I'll just smooth them down with the brush. Can't see what I'm doing. Um, and I'll smooth them down with the brush. And then I'll hit them with my maker's mark, make sure they're square, and I tip them upside down to dry, and I put them on the shelf. And that is basically it on how I do these mugs. So I've got this other one to do <laughs> really quick um, before it dries out. So Okay, the last thing I do is I will add my maker's mark. And smooth out if I get it too deep, which I always seem to. And then when they stiffen up a little bit more, I will sign my name. So that is basically it for these kind of gothic Victorian um, mugs. I know it's July. We don't want to be thinking about fall already. Well, I do. <laughs> it's too hot here. Um, but um, if you're making, it takes it takes months to make. So now's a good time to be thinking of um, fall and Thanksgiving and um, Halloween and Christmas and getting some of these ready to go, especially if you're doing any markets in August or September. You want to have some fall things available because that's when people are going to be looking for them. Um, so you need to th be thinking about that. A lot of people are starting to make Christmas. I can't do Christmas this early. I can do Christmas in the fall, but I cannot do it in July. <laughs> I just can't make myself do it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this um, tutorial and update on the totem. I'm hoping to glaze that this week. We I got it fired and uh, it this fired. And so... Um, Kind of making through, if you've noticed, the shelves are full. <laughs> We're kind of um, in the process now of glazing everything for the last three or four weeks. So we will be doing, I will be doing that. Um, I'm still on the fence whether or not I'm going to show it. Maybe what I'll do is show parts of it that um, you might find interesting that are going to be different than just dipping it in a bucket and pulling it out. Because <laughs> that's normally what I'm going to do is just dip it in the bucket and pour it out or pull it out. So. Anyway, thanks for joining me, and um, we will see you in the next video, and I hope you can get muddy in the studio. Ooh.